Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 23 of our Enigmatica 6 Expert Let's Play series, where today we are tetra hunting for some cool structures like this one that we're in right now. Uh, so let's get started. Hello there, my friends. Welcome back. Another beautiful day here in Land of the Andrada, uh, where today we are going to continue working on things and stuff to do. I know uh, we've been a little bit back and forth these past couple episodes, but I just keep finding cool things, and I want to, you know, I want to check them out. And there's so much things in an expert pack that it's uh, it's really difficult to stick to any one thing that we're doing because I'm like, oh, that looks cool. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, that looks cool. And then we, you know, we're diving around to 15 different tasks and 15 different projects so i hope it's not giving you guys whiplash because it's giving me whiplash but i'm having fun with it um so anyway in between episodes uh i didn't do terribly too much other than go and work on leveling up our enderium sword so if i pop this bad boy into our table here you're gonna see here's all its stats um if we go to enderium blade uh you can see maybe maybe i have to do it from here Oh, there we go. Yes. OK, so uh, what I had done initially in between episodes, I was looking to get our integrity right, because last time we were here, our integrity was only at what was it? Nine, maybe 11. I can't remember. And we couldn't get all of the things. We couldn't get the serrated blade, the tempered blade and the hooked blade. Uh, so what I ended up doing was adding the reinforced fuller which did slow the sword down, but it wasn't at too, too terrible. However, um, last episode, Rid had commented and mentioned that the uh, when a module on this settles, as you can see here, it says settled two uh, for both the blade and the hilt, it actually increases the integrity. So the integrity was increased up to 13, and I was able to remove the fuller because, uh, I mean, the fuller is okay. It increases the integrity by quite a bit, but it does slow the sword down by a significant amount if you remember our speed dropped from 1.15 down to 0.15 so we have a we have a pretty quick sword like spam clicking this is going to be no joke um, and as you can see here we have it uh honed uh for our blade hone is damage four and speed one and then enderium hilt is speed one hone uh and the advice to go to a bamboo forest was absolutely the call uh so if we look on our map here i uh I've been, I, I know I walked through a bamboo forest some point in this pack, and I could not find it. I feel like there was another one over here, but I walked this path while well, I flew this path with our takeoff spell. Could not find it. Um, so then I started teleporting back up here, because if you remember, I updated the pack and we lost our map from like this area where spawn is and everything at zero zero, uh, starting like, you know, somewhere around here. Anyway, uh, so we lost our map. So I went back up here to the Sahara and started flying south so I can connect these two points. And then I was going to fly over this way to connect this. So at least our map is connected to where we've explored. Um, but uh, I ran into this little area, which is a bamboo area. It's not a bamboo forest necessarily, but there's a lot of bamboo here, which is what I wanted to see. Uh, so let me show you how this all works. As you can see here, I have a workbench and I have a waystone here. But if we come over here, what are you? Leafcutter ant. Uh, so if we come over here and we take a look at our sword real quick, our hone is at 761 out of 955. And I left it not fully uh, honed on purpose so that you guys could see this. And we want to find like a decently, I, I, as you can see, I've kind of a, I've been getting a lot of bamboo because I've been I've been here for a while. So there is bamboo literally everywhere. But I want to kind of find a nice, decently sized vein of bamboo, I guess, so that you can see the, the true power of a bamboo forest when it comes to honing your sword. So here's a decently sized area. Yeah, look, that's pretty good. So if I were to swipe this, remember, what were we at? Uh, 761 out of 955. We chop that. We are now at 889. So that was over 100 towards our honing. Uh, and then we can do it again. And there we go. Our sword is now leveled up. We have another honing available to us, so we can go back home because I don't have a hammer. I forgot my hammer here. And uh, get more honing done on our sword. So if you have the uh, resources, definitely something to do is to craft, or well, to come find a bamboo forest if you can find one. You can also use your uh, nature's compass. There is, I believe, a biome called the bamboo forest. We'll talk about the stuff in my inventory in a moment, specifically that book. I don't want to show you guys that book yet because uh, during my exploration, I was able to loot a couple more uh, 
uh, apotheosis towers and we found something good. Uh, but bamboo forest, if we look for this, we can see, oh, there's actually one 770 blocks away. So maybe I did walk through one in this area, but because it's blacked out, I can't see it because that's not too far in that direction. Um, but yeah, bamboo forest would be a great place to go for this. But for, you know, we found we found that area. So we're good to go. Yeah, this should be my backpack, actually kind of cleaned up my I, I mean, I kind of cleaned up my inventory a little bit. I want to take this out and. You know what? No, that one's pretty good to have on me. I've been trying to organize things a little bit. I got my backpack back in so you can see it's here in my inventory. And I organized our chests here. So this is going to be all of our books. Plus, we have a cooking pot and a stove. And then this is like our gear and stuff because it all it's all individual NBT data for the most part. So it doesn't snack in our drawers. I got a couple more pieces of gear from doing some exploration. I, I don't remember exactly which ones. Uh, the biggest, most important thing I have, I don't remember if I had this a while ago, but I have this mythic helmet with unbreaking on it. But I like our helmet that we have now with mana boost on it. So I'm going to keep that one until such a time as it's gone. And then we can put these, this unbreakable one on. Um, but let's take a look at this book here. Boom, boom. Endless Quiver, probably the absolute best enchant that you can get for a bow, bar none. Uh, makes all arrows infinite. And when it says all arrows infinite, it means every single arrow type. Lightning arrows, we now have infinite lightning arrows. Diamond arrows for damage, we have infinite diamond diamond arrows. You want some TNT arrows and go mining with some with some bomb arrows or whatever. I don't know what what exactly they're called but yeah we have infinite yeah explosive arrows bam we have explosive arrows frost glowstone lightning any of these that we want to craft all we have to do is craft up one and we have infinite of them which is absolutely fantastic like we don't have to worry about any kind of arrows anymore uh challenge arrow makes each shot more difficult okay so yeah, uh, today I want to work on getting our getting us a nice bow to go with this endless quiver, so that way we don't have to even worry about enchanting our, uh, or we don't have to even worry about snowballs because we can just use our lightning arrows, infinite lightning enchants. Bada bing, bada boom, gotta go, gotta go get to work. So uh, I was doing a little bit of reading on the Discord, and the it was recommended uh, a Lumium bow is recommended because it is very fast. So I want to check it out and see. And it's fairly easy to make. It's just two, three tin, a silver, and a glowstone. So let's grab a little bit of tin. We'll just grab a stack. I, I don't remember what the, the combination was. So uh, some silver. We'll just grab a stack of each of these, and then uh, we'll figure it out when we get over there when I go to put them in. So it was... Um, if I want to make... 10 sets so 40 lumium let's just yeah 40 lumium so that is going to be uh 20 glowstone it is going to be uh 10 silver and 30 tin okay 10 silver 30 tin that's going to make us 40 of those 10 sets we can speed this up and we can go ahead and put the rest of the stuff away. I need to get my flux capacitor charged back up too. Uh, I found out the reason that it does that and it kicks it back into here because it tries to put it into a chest that's full. Because, you know, if I had this arcane gold out, it would try and put it into there and then it bounces back. It's a little bit annoying. It's a flaw with... Oh, did I do that backwards? I think I did. I think it was the silver, not the tin, that I needed more of. Well, we'll let uh, we'll let the glowstone be our limiting factor on this then. Bam, bam, do the thing. Now I gotta waste more time. But now the glowstone will be the limiting factor, not the uh, any of those two. Uh, so we need to go ahead and make a regular bow. I know we already have a bow, but this bow has... Did I... I have infinity on this, right? I don't necessarily want to lose infinity. Yes, endless quiver is better, but you never know what's going to happen. So I'd rather I'd rather just not risk losing it. So we'll take the infinity bow. We're going to pop it into our inventory here and not have to worry about it. Uh, so we have the bow. I'm going to go ahead and grab some phantom membrane. I think that's going to be usable for the uh, string. 
And then hopefully that's good. And then we can dump the rest of this away. And let's check out our bow because I want to, uh, well, let's see what's, let's see what's up with the bows. Check out the hollow sphere. If we're going to craft ourselves a regular bow, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and look at our stave. We're going to do a recurve. I believe that's going to be the fastest. And then I believe draw time. If we look at metals, refined glowstone. Where is Lumium? I want to see like how the, yeah. Okay. So it is as expected. Lumium is, ah, oh man, this requires tier five hammer. We're only at tier four. How do we get to a tier five hammer? I think that's going to require us to do some of the fancy crafting from Tetra, right? Yeah, tier four is going to get us an end rod, unbreaking, splash potion, and blacksmith's delight. Okay. And in order to get a tier five hammer, which is obsidian, uh, you need a higher integrity with an end rod. Okay, so we got the end rod. It gave us one of those for free, but we have to find a forge. After you eventually find a forge hammer underground, you'll need two full thermal cells and two upgrades to activate it. Place a workbench below the powered forge hammer and you'll gain access to its hammering abilities. The forge hammer is craftable in Enigmatica. In case you'd rather not go looking for it, you'd be missing out on some loot, though. And then there are upgrades. Now, I know there is a thing we can do. I found I know I found a uh, Tetra thing. It down in our basement. Uh, let's go ahead and if we combine these two together, I thought it was. Oh, maybe you have to actually maybe you have to do it here. If we do this, yeah, uh, empty scanner. We can enable a scanner with an eye of Ender, and what this will do is it'll allow. We'll see up at the top, uh, right behind the one probe, it can scan for the structures, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this away because we're going to need this for our hammer, though. Maybe we should bring these with us in case we find this and we're going to need to be able to do it downstairs. Because like, what is the uh, at Tetra? The forge is craftable, it said. But once we craft this, we can't move it is the issue. The forge hammer. And it requires us to get into. <laughs> wow. OK advanced pneumaticraft like that's far Ex assembly in pneumaticraft is pretty darn far so yeah that's not happening anytime soon let's go ahead and sleep i'm gonna pop down into our mine uh and there is a tetra structure down there that we can go explore i have our sword i'm gonna bring this knife because sometimes you need cutting down there too so we have a knife we have hammers we have our hollow sphere we have a sword we have a pickaxe we should have everything we need to go let me go ahead and clean up inventory just a little bit. Uh, you can go in there. The crowbar. Negative 70 hone. I don't know what this is for, but it, it seems like that's going to be useful for popping open the uh, the chests that are down there. So we'll be right back. I'll, I'll see, meet you guys downstairs. OK, so we're downstairs um, and we have our scanner and you can see it doing its pulse. And right there is a Tetra structure. But I wanted to show you guys the way that the scanner works. From what I understand, it scans a two chunk radius um, and F3G. Yeah. Turn. I don't know if I'm hitting the right button. I'm, F9. Turn off. Yeah. Yeah. OK, uh, so it scans a two chunk radius. So if we step over into this chunk, I believe. Yeah, look, there we go. It starts. You can see a little bit of a red spot up in the uh, scanner. It, it's noticing that there is a Tetra structure right up ahead. So if you're looking for one of these structures, they only spawn, I believe, in cold biomes. And you need to be you, you basically uh, break two chunks or a scan if you don't see one move two chunks scan move two chunks scan and it makes a fancy noise when it finds it and i believe it's going to make that fancy noise no matter what but yeah anyway so we have this structure we need to get into it somehow now these blocks are not breakable you can't do anything with them so we need to uh find a way into this without having to break into it there we go and then we got to find the entrance. Uh, so here's a forged workbench, but there is no hammer here, which is slightly unfortunate. So we need to go find another structure. There are more of them. 
But these are the crates, right? So in order to get into these crates, we have to use, uh, let's see if the crowbar, is this the proper tool? So, oh, what did I do? Metal scrap. Uh, okay. Found instructions deep underground or cold mountainous biomes. Okay, well, I wasn't entirely expecting to break that. I wanted to see what was in it. Maybe the crowbar breaks things. Let's try it with this crate, right? Because this says it needs a tier one hammer and then a knife of level one, or maybe that's a hook of level one. So let's do blackstone hammer. Oh, and that just breaks it. Okay. I see. So, and then inside of these, we'll get our loot like that right there. That's what we wanted. Thermal cells. Now this one has a low charge. This one has a high charge and we can ponder with these. That's interesting. To make better tools, you need the forge hammer multi-block. Install thermal cells on both sides. This is fantastic because Tetra is one of the most undocumented or poorly documented mods in my experience. So this is fantastic. And I love the Enigmatica team for doing this. A normal Tetra workbench can go below it. And that's the that's the build. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. Having that just description of how this works. Um, so we got a lubricant dispenser. That's a hand. That's a module. So we have a module already and we have two cells. So we just need one more module and then we just need to find a hammer because we're not going to be able to craft it. I wonder if we could pick it up with. Uh... Can we pick this up with cardboard, though? No, I can't put cardboard on it. OK, curious. I was like, that would be a nice little cheesy way of being able to. Uh... To do that just looking around seeing if there's any other loot in here otherwise we'll head to the other tetra structure that i know exists down here uh and f3g turn off f9 turn off yeah i always forget that f9 has multiple mo modes you can cycle through and eventually once you get to a higher tier you can actually break these these walls and stuff and, and bring them with you but uh yeah anyway all right see you in a minute okay as you can see we're back home uh the other forge that I thought I had seen was not a real forge. It was the other side of the forge that I had already been at. So yeah, as you can see, it's very dark over here, but I did finally find another forge. You can see my pickaxe is about broke. It took me quite a while to be able to find this, but uh, we got one. So I'm going to go ahead and light this area up as best I can. Probably should just bring a feral flare lantern. It only costs one level. That's actually probably a good idea. So let's go ahead and go home. We'll just light this up with a feral flare lantern. And then that way I don't have to worry about placing all these torches. Uh, get that out of there and that out of here. Request one. Bam. And back to the forge. And we can just kind of set this like right here. And that's fine. And it'll light this whole area up. And we'll light it up with torches for now just to get everything going. I have not been down here, so I don't know what to expect. I'm hoping that we find what we're looking for, but I'm not hopeful. I don't think we're finding it. Nope. This is one of the, uh, this is like a, I believe this is like an auto miner, or this is where we can put our low thermal cell somewhere and it'll charge it back up. I think, uh, let me get my Tetra stuff out of here, which means I'm gonna have to find another structure. But if we do that and then a hammer, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm making stuff up as I go along. Turn on. Is it transferring lava? That's what I want to know. I believe that's what this does, is it transfers lava. 13 of 128. So let's leave this here. Do I need to do anything special? Grab that diamond. That's what I need to do. Yeah, you're set. You're an extractor piston. We'll leave that as is, and we'll start busting into these things. Uh, so we can just do this and this. And there was a bunch of stuff up here. Uh, not going to be easy to get to, but we we need one more upgrade. So there's a lot of ice around here. So water is falling and then it's breaking the ice. Or while well, water is falling and then we're breaking the ice. As we explore. And kind of bummed. I was hoping for the, the forge. Maybe there's a little bit more to this area. I'm not sure. Uh, so that requires a tier three hammer. You are a transfer unit as well. I don't know what I just got. I got some salvage, apparently. 
Insulated plates can be attached to a forge hammer or transfer unit to increase its efficiency. Okay, so we have the upgrades that we're going to need. Let's go ahead and bust into this thing. Needs a tier three hammer. Okay. Break all the locks. And then we can open this. We need our crowbar again. Let's pry it open. There we go. Oh, no, don't do that. Uh, don't shift click. That's for sure. This has multiple pages, too, by the way, in case you didn't know. That's a lot of scrap that we got. Pick up. Pick it up. Pick it all up. Okay. It won't pick up all of that. And there we go. Uh, now we got to fix our inventory here. Okay, so inventory is fixed. We f I found this door that we need to open. I don't know. Crowbarring it doesn't seem to work. Maybe I have to break all the hammer pieces. There we go. Oh, but this was just the entrance to this. That's how we get in. Okay, that didn't help. So what I need to do then is uh, continue exploring and go find us the forge that we're going to need so we can get our bow and then we can move on from Tetra. And then we can set our, uh, we can set a waystone there. Yeah, look, it's still low. 13 out of 128. Hammer into bedrock to extract. Found in structures deep underground. Uh, several extractors can be hammered into the same fracture. Increases the yield. Increase yield in place on top of seeping bedrock, whatever that is. Uh, and slightly increased yield in biomes inhabited by husks, strays, or witches, such as cold, desert, or swamp biomes. So we have all the things that we're going to need for this. Yeah, you guys need the stack. We have two of these. Yeah, something like that. Inventory just got messed up again. I didn't actually mean to click the button, but I did. Um, but yeah, uh, basically I just need to, I need to find, first off, we need to figure out how we recharge these. Cause it, I'm pretty sure this is the, the way to do it from the lava and it's an extractor pipe. Like, look, why is this extractor pipe glowing? And this one's not also diamonds. Yes, please. Like that one's glowing. Maybe I should put this thermal thing into that one. I'm not sure. It looks the same, but look, this one's doing stuff. So that is how you do it. Look, it's going to transfer lava from this into this. But why is this one on and this one's not? What is the difference between these two? Because they look exactly the same to me. But this one's turned on. Maybe I need to hammer that. Maybe that is on. But I had already done that, didn't I? Yeah. I don't know. This one's turned off, but that's okay. We don't necessarily need it. But now we know this is how we can recharge our thermal cells, right? So this is now full. So we can grab that other one because that one just said good, not full. And we can charge this one up too. So it it is good that we found this because this is going to enable us to recharge our stuff that we got. Uh, I need to do this. So we'll move our waystone down here just because it doesn't it doesn't need to be up here when this is going to be the area we're going to be working at. And then, yeah, let's just put this here. Bam. So this is the, what are these called? Transfer. Transfer platform. So that's what we're going to call this. This is the transfer platform. So now this guy should be full as well. Now, do they stack? No. Even though they do, they have the same NBT data, they don't stack. That's okay, though. Let's go ahead and throw all this stuff in here. And basically, I'm going to go and continue exploring. Uh, we're going to wrap up the episode here. I need to find a forge, right? So in order to... Well, I'm just going to continue exploring. The nice thing is, is when we have the uh, hollow sphere in our inventory, it does uh, ring. It, it makes that sound. Um, so I can just, I can just keep digging and then eventually we'll find another one. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully there's one close. We have to stay in this cold biome. I need to go ahead and repair my pickaxe. Don't tell me ugh, it wants sticks. The one thing I don't have on me is sticks. So I'm going to have to head home and grab sticks. Really? I, I have diamonds. I found diamonds, but no sticks. Okay. Well, that's okay. Uh, we'll take this. Oh, also, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this. I figured out how this works. We just hover over it. 
Uh, it needs to be on the right hand side. If we do this, it's going to put us in our offhand. But as long as it's over here, we can swap between our two tools. That was easy. So I don't have to swap between our ads and our X. I can just boop. There we go. Um, but yeah, I'll just keep exploring and hopefully run into another uh, forge thing. And yeah, that's basically it. So if you enjoyed this uh, further deep dive into Tetra, uh, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, tips, tricks and everything with Tetra. Let me know. Like I said, I'm going to make the Lumium bow with a stave. There's a quick latch or something that you can get, I think, that allows you to like rapid fire like or it'll auto fire. So you don't have to you just hold the button and it'll keep firing for you. We're going to apply endless quiver to it which means lightning crafting is going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy and we'll be able to move on uh thanks for stopping by thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one have a good one <laughs>